This is not the church of Joseph Smith. Travis went good, so. So today was uh, Trinity Sunday when uh, all Christendom uh, celebrates uh, the creation of the Trinity under Constantine at the Nicene Council. And uh, I'm one who does not go to other people's channels of other religions or even Mormons and spew hate and say you're wrong because I, I'm right and my religion's right. I show respect. Now yes, it's necessary to tell the truth. And so when I talk about a subject matter that requires me to go back into history and explain, such as explaining scripture, it is necessary to tell the truth and not perpetuate the lies of all other religions. Because it's not just Mormons that demand that everybody accept their lies. But nonetheless, I allow them their free speech on their channel. I do not go to put a thumbs down. I do not go to put hate comments and death threats. I let all people worship how, where, and what they may. But I will not accept the lie. I will not accept witchcraft, idolatry, etc. Because uh, the truth is that all religions are devolved from ancient Egyptian. And that was the organization that Joseph Smith was trying to restore. And so that's one of the many lies that the church has been telling us as Mormons growing up. Is that we're a restoration of the Gospels church during the Roman period where Jesus, the Savior, failed to save. And of course the church has an excuse for that. They say, well, he saved us spiritually then. He's coming back to save us physically and start the resurrection for the eternal. And so, yeah, I cannot accept the lies of the church anymore. I refuse to accept the lies. And I cannot go back. You know, others who have been excommunicated, they say, well, you know, I might consider going back. They just have to change a few things and allow me back in. What the hell? No. The whole point of you getting excommunicated is because you were saying that the church was doing something wrong. And they punished you for it. They tried to silence you. See, for me, I mean, you guys are lucky. Lucky they only excommunicated you. They tried to murder me. I caught the payments from the church to the people assigned who failed, but who were assigned to do so. So I can't go back to the abuser. That would be the dumbest thing in the universe. Just like I can't go back to my second ex. She reached out after one of her daughters had a baby. I can't go back. She's still demonstrating that abusive tendency in her, which she got from the church. She uses the church to extort and to abuse. I can't go back to that kind of a relationship. You know, I let her 
worship how, where, and what she may. But she cannot lie to me and force me to accept her lies as truth. Same with any Mormon. And it's disturbing that Mormons don't see it themselves. That they can't say, hey, wait a minute, no, this isn't what you taught us, guys, when I was in seminary or when I went to the BYUs. It was Rick's for me. I refuse to accept that I graduated from BYU and that I'm a BYU alumnus. I had gotten a flyer in the mail for, uh, I think it was a Geico with the ostrich guy, whatever that is. Uh, it was an advertisement from, our, from them to those who are alumni of BYU Idaho. Uh uh, that's not me, wrong address. <laughs> but the poor guy, I mean, yeah, he's kind of lame talking about his company 24 7, but it was kind of rude of his girlfriend to silence him during the barbecue. But yeah, he was a little insensitive himself, offering chicken to the ostriches. <laughs> and don't even get me started on Flo's uh, Jeremy. Is that Jeremy? Is whatever his name is? Oh my God! What a drama! You know, he's flirting with all the girls. Then he shows up with a wife and kids. Now he's back to flirting with other girls and trying to be the dad to other mothers that guy is just creepy anyway <laughs> I digress but uh, that concept of morality that we see in commercials or immorality in commercials all comes from a, a religious perspective as religion, whatever one you're a part of, dominates our lives as we grow up. Uh, and we see this in our government. Religion is not supposed to be in our government. And yet, there it is. It's not separated. And that causes problems when a majority of a religion dominates a government because their religion then starts to make the rules for that particular government. And thus we see it here in Utah. You know, the legislator are Mormons. They believe they are literally inspired by God to run the state of Utah. And they've come out and said so from time to time. And they always have the meetings with the church president or the representatives of the apostles as they command them to do what they want them to do. That's just sick and wrong. You don't do that. Meeting with religious leaders should be a public event and everybody should be aware of it, knowing what exactly is being said between the two. There are not to be secrets between religion and government. But uh, if I were to come out, and I have, telling what the ancient Egyptian religion is that we're supposed to try to restore Mormons are not tolerant they're more tolerant of other people's religions than they are of someone saying hey Mormonism is this way to the Mormons pff, yeah they don't 
care anything about the other branch offs. They're nobody to them. And that superiority attitude is just, oh my god. And even after the videos I did last couple of days exposing the Mormons who can't handle the truth and put thumbs down because they're so horrible of human beings that are incited by the church they still keep doing it you can see it for yourself and so yeah if I were to tell you the real church history as I have been you know those videos aren't getting seen as much anymore because I keep doing new stuff and so the old stuff rarely get picked up by new people especially with YouTube who's siding with the church to rewrite history to suppress information of truth of science you know, translation is a science either Joseph Smith translated the Book of Mormon or he didn't but oh no plates either Joseph Smith is correct with his translation of the biblical Hebrew text in the King Follett discourse or he isn't Joseph Smith is correct with his translations of the facsimiles 1 and 2 or he isn't the church says he isn't and not all Mormons know these things you know it's brand new there are still Mormons who believe they're going back to Independence Missouri there are still Mormons who believe we're going to get new scripture why are we getting new scripture when we had what we had taken away from us the Apocrypha gone Brigham Young failed to put in all of Joseph Smith's speeches and when you read them you'll know why <laughs> but because he left them out Mormons then believe oh well those aren't inspired <laughs> those haven't been approved oh my god who taught you this the founder of our church and Mormons deny his word I, you know and yet there are still those Mormons I was one of them who said hey if he's our founder this should be in the Doctrine and Covenants why isn't it in there nobody would ever give me a clearer explanation of why the King Follett discourse is not in our Doctrine and Covenants and all the excuses of well it, it just it wasn't edited for publication blah 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 well edit it how hard is it to edit it for publication <laughs> it's done with all the others they're God and the Apocrypha there's even a Doctrine and Covenants passage saying hey it's good to go as is I don't need to revise it uh, where is it oh it's in the Bible dictionary and so dear God they want us to research the Bible dictionary in conjunction with our scripture study because they don't want us going to other sources only church approved curriculum and so as church history changes so does the curriculum and yet we're going hey wait a minute it was it used to be that Joseph Smith was a translator directly from the plates now you're saying that he looked at rocks in a hat didn't even look at the plates and it's not called translation and that's why no prophet ever claims the title of translator I mean there are some serious problems in Mormonism and there are some serious attitudes in Mormonism 
thinking that they've got to defend it rather than say, "Uh uh-uh, I'm out. Like the 13 million others of us who left activity, either just not by going to church anymore, not associating with anybody in the ward, or being excommunicated, or giving up their membership to the church, saying, I'm out. There you go, Bishop. And then you, when you know that the church is wrong, and it's not just mortal weakness, the frailties of man, no, this is criminal negligence. This is criminal abuse and deception and lies. And for what? To get money. Church is filthy rich. And what do we read about in the Book of Mormon about churches who are filthy rich and neglect the poor? You can't just say, oh, well, they've given out millions. They give out millions all the time. Yeah, but they're trillionaires. We still have poor. Whatever they're giving isn't getting to the people to get them out of poverty. With trillions of dollars, at least one person should be out of poverty. Can't they do just one person? Is it that hard for them to give up their money? Is the value of money that much more important than human life? If you can't take care of the physical welfare of your people, how are the people supposed to trust you to take care of their spiritual welfare? And that came from Joseph Smith, by the way not published in the Doctrine and Covenants, so therefore it has no authority. Dear God. And then all the accusations against Joseph by this church, by Brigham Young and those who followed him. Have you not noticed that, ex-Mormons? Seriously, have you not noticed that? Emma's church? No, Joseph Smith was not a polygamist. He did not have relations with other women. And you can say, well, you know, she's just... No, she would know. Women would have babies, and she would go, Hey, Joseph, why is this woman having your baby? But nope. And other things with the temple. They don't wear magic underwear. They don't have the endowment ceremony. And neither does Sidney Rigdon. Sidney Rigdon just went back to preaching. He didn't go all out with the temple and all that stuff. He just went back to what he knew. And then others. Can't Mormons put one and one together and come up with three? <laughs> Synergy. I always make fun of that. I have ever since I was a kid. Just when people say something that I know can be a different answer than what they're expecting me to say, I say it. And then they get angry. <laughs> but I've been able to out debate my own parents since I was a little kid. Especially my dad, who took debate. When there's something wrong, it's obvious. So, I. Yeah, the, this is not Joseph's church, that's for certain. I mean, yeah, Nelson said it, but he said it in the context of the scripture passage that if you're going to call a church, you're going to need to call it after your God. You don't call it after a man. But we now know that the devil lies. 
and pretends to be God. That's also in Scripture. And so, is he going to call his church the Church of Lucifer Christ of Latter-day Demons? No! There may be mortal men who will do that and have the Church of Satan, because they do, using Anton LaVey's Satanic Bible. But it was made by man, and they admit it. They worship Lucifer, so it's named after him. But the real Lucifer, in order to deceive and trick the very elect, no, he pretends to be God. He demands worship as God. And unless those members recognize the secret signs and the loyalty oaths to the church and not to God, and recognize that the doctrines are the doctrines of Lucifer and not the true God, those members will be deceived, as those three million who are still left have been deceived. The inverted pentagram is on the keystone of the Salt Lake Temple. The keystone means the doctrines of that symbol are taught within that temple. Sure enough, the inverted pentagram from Isaiah, how art thou fallen from heaven. The inverted pentagram, not the pentagram, the inverted pentagram is the keystone of the church because it's on the Salt Lake Temple at Temple Square, the headquarters of the church. And if you're still wondering, well, go to State Street and look at the Eagle Gate. Lo and behold, there it is too. That was designed by Brigham Young's brother, Don Carlos. Or not brother, son. So Brigham Young was teaching his children to worship Lucifer, teaching them about the signs of Lucifer teaching them about the doctrines of Lucifer and the covenants and the oaths in the temple of Lucifer deceiving all Mormons who thought it was Jesus' church because Joseph Smith was the founder but none of the other branch offs have any of that it's all Brigham Young and his followers. And so the Mountain Meadows Massacre, the Mormons who died coming over in the winter, the native indigenous people of the Ute Indians, all murdered under Brigham Young. What is the one thing, Mormons, that denies you exaltation? And Brigham Young said it. It's his section in the Doctrine and Covenants that is attributed to Joseph instead. Yeah, murder. Murder, death, kill. Maybe I'll watch that before I go to bed tonight. Demolition Day. Alrighty. I'm hoping uh, Wesley Snipes gets better roles now that he's out of prison for tax evasion. Alrighty.